Can you set up a QMS in Confluence and Jira and do your requirements management there for your medical device? That's, uh, that's the big question. And the short answer is it's a terrible idea, yet a lot of people still do it, um, but it, there's no rational reason why they do it. It's a bit like, I don't know, it's a bit like smoking. Many people still do it, but rationally it doesn't make any sense. The same is, like, uh, same is true for Confluence and Jira. It's kind of like kind of crappy software, and it's especially crappy for medical device compliance documentation, um, yet still people use it. So um, let me show you how you could do it and why it sucks, and then you can kind of make your own decision whether you really want to move forward with this, um, with thing, with this thing people uh, call uh, software. So um, get this, I actually created myself a Jiron Confluence account, which is uh, unheard of, just to show you this. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, firstly, uh, Jiron and Confluence are super complex, and like I guess like even besides medical device documentation, there's no real reason to use it um, as a small team. But let's just assume I, I just don't have these um, rational thoughts in my mind. So I created this um, Jira like project thing, test project. And um, let's maybe take a moment and think about how the regulatory documentation would need to look like. So um, in, in our like uh, compliance documentation software formwork, Again, I'm actually not necessarily trying to promote it here. I'm just showing, showing you how content-wise a regulatory submission would look like for medical device software. Um, so you have something called software requirements or design inputs, and those are essentially a specification of your software. So it's a list of, in simplified terms, of a list of features which you can then send to your auditors, and then they can look at that list of features and say like, oh yeah, okay, I understand what the software does, I understand like which risks it has, and I can kind of like see you actually tested those features. Um, so we have this example project, Dicom Viewer, which you can actually uh, actually use yourself in our software. It's, it's a template. You can just copy paste uh, all of the stuff you're looking at right now and use it for yourself and save a lot of time. Oh wait, I am promoting our software. Anyway, um, you can see it's like it's not a lot of items. It describes the software. So like maybe number one is like you can download it. Let's look at another one. Like it displays images. So this is like a radiology software. It displays images. You can compare images. You can run computations on those images. So uh, so you get the idea. It's like a list of features, um, and there aren't that many. It's like um, less than twenty actually, and um, you could do that in Jira too. So I could kind of like. Um, I could create a, kind of like a specific ticket type in Jira and then like create a similar list here. So I could do kind of like create issue. Oh man, I suck at Jira. You could say like, okay, a user can uh, download the software. Uh, the software, yeah. Okay, so that's maybe number one. And then I could like label this as, I don't know, software requirement or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Okay, all sorts of stuff I don't need and created. Um, and that's kind of like the, the, first, the first issue essentially. So the first issue is I have all these fields which technically I don't need for my regulatory submission. So that by itself is no problem, I could just ignore them. But the problem actually is that you now have to like go into the standard and actually read up on the fields you do need. So if you check out our software, you could kind of like see um, like this, uh, we could just open up this one feature and we already like predefine all the, um, all the form fields which you actually need. So now you see it has, um, it has all these fields, right? So this is the software requirement display images. And you can actually see, okay, it implements uh, stakeholder requirements. That's a regulatory requirement. So you need to define something which is called stakeholder requirements or user needs. Um, you need to link it to software tests. So you have to show you've actually tested it. You need to link it to failure modes to do like a risk assessment of like what can go wrong if this feature kind of fails. And you can link it to risk controls, so it could actually be something which reduces a certain risk. Um, I won't go into, it, into too much detail uh, here, um, maybe in another video. So if you edit it, this is how it looks, and I think um, this makes it even more clear. So in our software, and again, this is not necessarily about our software, but it's just like about um, predefining these form fields. So we predefine these form fields for you. So you have a category, and these are actually the category from the standard, so you have to like associate one category with it uh, for the software requirement. Maybe it's a functional requirement in this case. And like, um, yeah, documenting all of this sometimes doesn't make sense. Um, then you can like here, you can just like select a user need or a stakeholder requirement to associate it with. Like you essentially have this many-to-many -many relation going on here. Uh, same for failure modes, same for software tests, same for risk control. So all of these are regulatory requirements. 
So now if you say, okay, if you still want to use Java, of course, yes, you could replicate that in Java. You could kind of like read all the standards and come up with your own essentially re-implementation of our software or other KMS software or other requirements management software in your own uh, Jira instance. I'm not really sure if that is a good use of your time, but um, people have done it. The big risk there, of course, is that your interpretation might not be the general interpretation which auditors have. So I guess like the benefit of using QMS software is typically if it's an established manufacturer like, like us actually, um, then uh, companies have already passed audits with that software, like, like our customers. So you actually have more like, I guess, like safety that, uh, that whatever you're documenting here actually um, has, has been proven to be the right stuff. But you could, you could still do it and it, it'll be very, very clunky. Um, Maybe the final point is that uh, you also need to version this. So technically, an auditor could come in and kind of like ask you, okay, please show me the list of software requirements um, for version one of your software, but you might already be at version four of your software. So in our software, this is pretty easy. So you would just go on the left side, you can see um, stuff is actually versioned. So I could just, we actually only have one version here for this example project, but if we had more, I could just like, select another version and would actually show me the list of software requirements for that specific version in time. And each requirement itself is also versioned. So um, if I make a change to it in, in a new version, that change sort of gets archived. So I don't like overwrite the content for the old version. So that's very important. Um, I think this is probably one of the biggest drawbacks of Jira and actually many similar tools um, because, okay, I could manage stuff in this list. Sure, that would kind of like work. But um, the problem would be that how do you archive it over time? Um, and I've, I've worked with uh, probably more than 100 uh, medical device uh, software companies in the past. And I've seen some Jira implementations, also some which passed audits. And probably the best one I saw was still super crappy because they would essentially go ahead and export everything. And then the Jira export itself sucks a lot. So it's, it's often like a, a huge Word document, which is crazy, but it's a huge Word document with these things. And then they would archive that in Confluence again. So they would upload it as an attachment somewhere in Confluence. And that would be their way of archiving things. But that sucks terribly, right? Because you lose all the structured data and now you just have a huge chunk, which is a word file. So again, it's, it's doable, but it sucks a lot. Um, and this whole discussion really boils down to having um, generic tools versus specialized tools. So Jira might be a good generic tool. That's kind of like, I guess like that's open for discussion, but generally speaking, Jira is a very generic tool. And yes, you could customize it to, to use it for your quality management stuff, um, but I would not advise it and would cost you a lot of time and it would have a lot of risks. Um, Whereas like QMS software, like our software or that of our competitors is like a specialized tool. So you don't lose time customizing it and you get all the compliance features baked in. So that's really what I would advise. Um, to create more transparency here, and we generally like to uh, create a lot of transparency is on our, so on our website, we actually have a QMS software list. So um, we actually have exactly these points. So you can see, does it have QMS features? Does it have requirements management features? And then the exclamation mark is it does have it, but you have to customize it and kind of like build it yourself. Um, and like green is like it has specialized features and red is like it doesn't have features at all. So some of these softwares, maybe you know Redmine. Redmine is also, it's kind of like an open source Jira. It sucks a bit less actually. Um, but for example, you can't manage documents in that like you could in Confluence. So it doesn't have KMS features at all because it doesn't have a document editor. Um, so generally speaking, I would really look for a software. If you're looking for QMS software to automate your compliance documentation, I would look for a software which has uh, specialized features. So I hope that puts an end to the whole Jira QMS discussion. Probably not. Probably I'll still, probably tomorrow, I'll still see a consulting customer who says like, yeah, we're using Jira and uh, please help us. And then I'll be like, great, why am I recording these videos? But anyway, I hope this helped. And if you do have kind of like solved this in Jira or Confluence, feel free to like leave a comment below or send me an email. I'd be really interested to hear how you solve this.